So today we are sitting at Long Street Cafe, the favorite haunt of Mr. Riri D over there, who's the DJ, who started with Shaheen over here, prophets of the city, way back in the 80s, and they are going to be playing the jazz festival for the first time. So how did you guys get started? Um, with regards to PLC's start, I would say, um, we used to hang out together in the underground hip hop club in uh, in the in the city center though and um, I was one of the DJs at the club Shaheen used to be one of the free, the freestyle battle MCs at the club and a mutual friend introduced us to each other I heard his dad at the recording studio he needed to be convinced there's really a guy in South Africa that could actually scratch because back then that was un, it was unheard of yeah and that was kind of the connection over there I thought, okay, if I get hold of this guy and he gets me to the recording studio, I'm going to become like my favorite rapper, Sugar Gang at the time. We're going to have color TVs and cars and we're going to have big houses and everything. <laughs> Little to know back at the back at the ranch. <laughs> things took a completely, things uh, turned around completely. I didn't know that Shane was a political act, uh, activist at the time. So my motivation was a little bit different to his motivation. But the thing that really... Uh, brought us together was the fact that he was a, a very skillful rapper at the time and I just felt that you know that there was this opportunity for synergy at that point in time we didn't know we we're gonna do this hip-hop crew called POC or we didn't even know what the name was gonna be or anything so that's kind of you know my, my, my introduction to Shane. Um, I, I met um, a mutual friend at the party who said um, you know this guy who can scratch and I was like there's no ways no ways because I tried doing this stuff and I messed up a lot of turntables family wasn't pleased with me and so one la barang when I went to go say slama to my to my granny and them it was in the area so I thought I'm gonna catch this guy out now he's lying so fortunately D was there and I was like, whoa, this is for real. And there's graffiti on the wall and everything. This is like, oh, this is like for real, for real. Um, so he gave me a demo, took it to my dad. Because uh, my dad uh, and his business partner at the time had a, a small recording studio. And so then we just bugged him to be able to, to dabble with some stuff and whatever. And um, yeah, that was, that was it. There was a whole process that, that, that led us to the name. Spending time in the recording studio with Shaheen, you know, of course I wanted to go in there and do my Shugel gang thing and become the ghetto superstar in the process. Um, and if we look at the, the social and the political climate at the time, you know, it was quite hectic um, in the townships um, at that point in time and we were looking for sampling material. And for me, I didn't quite understand what this politics stuff was on. Why is this guy talking about Steve Biko and Mandela and all these things? Who are these people? They don't, you know, I can't, I don't relate to these guys. Tell me some other stuff here. You know, tell me where the merchants are on the road. And I'm like, you know, I can tell you exactly what the deal is. But as we were going through different uh, records to sample, uh, Shane pulled out the Abdullah Ibrahim uh, record from his dad's collection. And that's when a lot of things changed for me personally though and I felt there was probably mutual energy going on in the room and that led to a song called the Boxburg Blues at the time. We wrote this song called the Boxburg Blues and for me I just felt this social and political content pouring out and I didn't realize that that, that actually existed and it just so happened that people caught wind of us recording and we were invited to perform i think our first performance was at the anti-drug anti -drug march anti-drug <laughs> march in woodstock we ended up there shortly after that our next big performance was on the grand parade against the inconscription campaign and i mean how's that for irony <laughs> yeah. but you know we so we, we started to get more and more into the whole social political aspects of what was going on in um, in cape town city or in our country and I think for me personally, when I think of uh, prophets of the city, I, I kind of, what was going through my head at the moment when I suggested to Shaheen, what do you think about the whole vibe, was kind of just um, paying tribute and paying homage and acknowledging great teachers that paved the way for us previously. Not saying that we think of ourselves as prophets. Right through from your religious aspects to the social, to the political. So for us it was, you know, it was more tributing, it was more tribute 
the great teachers. So, 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 so here's the kicker. So when the first album was released, show in Cape Town people knew who we were because it was visible. Other parts of the country, they thought we were gospel group. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so you'd see that there was this flip from prophets of this city to that city that to try and hippopify it. Yeah. We had to add the dodges somehow. Like yeah, yeah, thing. like people would come like and hear this thing like fuck the government and whatever like oh, this isn't what we pay to see <laughs> with the gospel group so that's where the duh came from yeah duh yeah <laughs> for me it's really phenomenal to, to, to kind of realize what it actually means to the community and also for people yeah. to really embrace I would say hip hop or local hip hop history, knowing that we've kind of been right there as the first generation and people are tapping into that and they're always using POC as some sort of reference point when it comes to social community and those types of um, um, issues, you know, so for me that's really, really phenomenal. Do you think that there's a certain level of nostalgia also? For me, the, I mean, the, there's the career stuff, right? But for me, there's the impact that it that it, that it has outside of that. You know, I've, um, after I've left the group, I've done a bunch of different things. Um, and everything that I've done since then, whether it was the academic thing, whether it was doing the work that I do now, I was involved with Bush Radio at some point, yeah. doing a lot of youth work yeah. and things there. Um, it was all informed by my experiences, you know, when that, that, that came from, from POC.